should we try this again? Yeah. Okay. So where do we start? Where do we go back to? So we were talking about what is B2C, and you were giving us a little overview of B2C. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give us a Let's quicker version of that? Exactly. So you have uh, B2C gives you the ability to define a set of users uh, who can, um, let's say, access the various applications and properties that you want to be able to share outside mm -hmm. of your organization, you know, for things that you don't want to use your native Azure AD B2C, I'm sorry, your Azure AD tenant for. Um, so you can do it in a couple different ways. You could do it so that uh, I have um, uh, just a list of users and they come in and they authenticate and create an account for themselves, maybe sign up, maybe put some additional properties in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also have it so that you can use other identity providers, external identity providers, maybe something like a Microsoft account where you bring a Hotmail or a uh, um, uh, Outlook account to the uh, to the party. Uh, you can use a Google account, you can use a Facebook account. All of those are accounts that people typically have, so they would use that and uh, bring that and use that to authenticate against your application. Um, why you might want to do one over the other is if you think about it, if I'm coming to your site and authentic and creating an account in your Azure AD B2C tenant, that password is in there, that uh, my information is in there. And if I need to is get my password changed or I need to have something done with my account, then I'm coming to you as the, the B2C owner to say, hey, can you help me and fix this? Versus the uh, external identity provider, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, what have you, has that part of the of the information, right? So if their account or if their password they forget, they're going to go to Google and ask that instead of to your site. So they're going to figure it out over there and then just use that uh, um, that authenticated account to come back and then access your site. So isn't that Does like that make sense? yeah? Isn't that you know what's commonly talked about like Open ID? Exactly. Under the covers, it's using those standard protocols, OAuth, OpenID, depending okay. on what you want to implement for which part of the application. I see. And so we're calling that B2C. Mm -hmm. Is there something, I mean, is there something more that Microsoft does in their version of it on top of OpenID and stuff like that? Or is that just what they're calling it? It's still, yeah, I mean, it's still the same, the same standard so that you can yeah. implement in your app just as, as you used to. But um, it, it gives your your application developers a bit of flexibility, right? I could say my application is going to be authenticated against Google accounts, mm -hmm. and I can do the you know create my client ID and secret out in the Google uh, equivalent of their tenant, mm -hmm. and uh, and register my app against that, and then use that to uh, uh, be presented inside of my application for signing in. But then that's one way that users can authenticate against my uh, application. What B2C is doing is bringing multiple identity providers together, including creative, creating accounts natively. Uh, right, it, right, that's so it. It's, so I have that flexibility. And you mentioned um, authentication from other companies. Is that more like mm -hmm. a federated authentication when you were talking about that? Because I've heard that word around before. Yeah, so being able to have, um, if you think about it, there's almost a, you know, a network of Azure AD tenants sitting in in our Azure space, uh, where your company has one, my company has one, you know, our partners have them, our various customer, uh, potentially with our customers who are businesses would have them as well, and what you can do is through B two B, you can say this person, I'm going to uh, give them access to my application or to some services because they're authenticated over there in in their tenant. Uh, it's just I'm basically sharing that resource with them. Uh, and what that does is that lets you share resources with partners and customers, uh, corporations that you're working with, but put the onus on their their tenant and, and their organization to maintain that account, to maintain password, to maintain any kind of security components around that. And what's really important is if that person should leave the company, disable that account so that it then can't get access to the things that you gave them access to yeah. because they were part of that business. Yeah, we're trusting them basically. 
But mm -hmm. but we can combine all these different things together. Exactly. Sounds really and cool. That's... And and the interesting one thing I was going to say is I I don't work with well. I'm doing more and more of this stuff now because things are in Azure world, and so um, I I have a lot to say about Azure at my organization. But when but when we were in a data center. I wasn't really involved in anything that had to do with AD and stuff like that. There's a different group that handled that. I was always guessing that it was hard to associate our on-premises AD instance with someone else's on-premises AD tenant mm -hmm. uh, because I think you had to use SAML or something like that. It was all sorts of stuff, right? And yeah. I'm just guessing, I could be wrong, that if it's done in Azure... Maybe it's just easier to connect those dots because it's all in Azure and you just click a button and boom, you're connected kind of thing. Right, because what happens is it, it pretty, <laughs> the tenants themselves will stay separate, sure, right? Of course, so yeah. who owns and maintains and, and manages right. you know, one business versus another. But what you do get is the common plane of I need to authenticate. Yep. So you come to my application, it's like, oh, you're from this organization here's the URL you go to to get a token or to log yeah. in or what have you. And when you do that, come back. So that central place of where that happens be, it becomes more, um, uh, becomes uniform across all of those right, places right. instead of me having to stand that up. I think we used to use, um, what was it, ADFS? Right. Yeah, Federated, I, you know, I, I've we, done that <laughs> exactly. in years past too. At different jobs, I think I did ADFS. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's you know so that takes it down a completely different path now that we moved everything into the into the cloud as it were so to the cloud everything's well let's not get all right so anyway so so where do we go next on this uh, B to C because we 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 sort of diverged a little into B to B because I think it's interesting yep. and I think they it's relate important. and I think it helps to understand them all in the, in the scope of this conversation absolutely it's it's important. So this is my Azure AD, I'm sorry, my Azure subscription. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to create a uh, create a new resource. And that resource I want to create is Azure AD uh, B2C. You're just calling, oh, oh, that's the name of the, right, okay, got it. You're not at the naming, or you're at the search, okay. Yep. Exactly. So these are all the various services that come up when I put that in, and the one I want here is this particular service here okay um, i'll click on it i'll say create now there's essentially a um a two two-step process to doing this i'm in my azure subscription that's attached to my company's tenant in this case the microsoft tenant so i could go ahead and say i want to create a new b2c tenant that's the first thing we're doing um because you can't really nest Tenant. So I've got to create this tenant in and of itself, even though it sits inside of my subscription that's under the Microsoft tenant. Make sense? Yeah. So this is not just an Azure AD tenant, which you could create another one of those if you wanted to. For, Absolutely. This is an that's Azure easy. AD B to C tenant. It is a different thing. Completely different uh, 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 component yeah. in okay. Azure. And I'm going to call it TD, let's see if this works. TDTS Live. You should call it Echo. I think you should call it Systolic Plate 6 because that would be the prize for Systolic helping us out with the audio problems. But it's okay. You keep going. <laughs> you <don't have> to... <laughs> let's do that. All right. So this worked. So TDTS Live. I got the little Oh, check sure. Mark These there. have to be global unique. Exactly. Okay. Um, which is getting tougher and tougher to do, right? Because we. <laughs> yeah. All of the. The short, unique names are there. We're going to keep it in the country of the U.S., although we could pick other countries if we wanted to have it um, be the, the host region where this lives. Uh, and it's it's actually fast. I remember creating this a, a while ago, and I thought it took a lot longer where I would go and just let it run and then come back to it. Uh, but this, this uh, um, when I did it earlier, it happened very quickly. And quickly in a matter of like a minute or so. But that wasn't too bad. And I'm curious because it says click here to manage your new directory. Yeah. That's going to do a pop out. Um, Cause we'll see how this goes. So what, yeah, which I probably shouldn't have done. Let's see. 
Add that on there, subscription. Uh, right. All right. Here's what. So it's interesting they have that there. Um, so what should happen is I should go back to here and say, let's link an Azure AD B2C tenant to my Azure subscription. Link. Sorry, say that again. Link an Azure AD tenant to your B2C. Okay. Right. Yep. So that's what the second one is. So the first thing we did was let's create the Azure AD B2C tenant. And then once it's created, we go ahead and link it. That's why this subscription says, hey, you don't really have anything linked to here. Okay, so even though you can pop out uh, out of that little um, notification at the bottom and say, hey, you're done, go link to it. What we want to do is come back into here and say, link an existing Azure AD B2C tenant to my subscription. So I do that. Here are the tenants. And you can see I kind of tried this a couple of times. <laughs> That's always the giveaway. Yep. It's like when you're watching uh, a Visual Studio presentation and you see Web App 1, Web App 2, Web App 3, Web App, you know, <laughs> somebody's working on that demo a lot of times because they don't feel like naming it or something, but it's, yeah. That's how you get it right. You know, you're, right. if it works the first time, that's when you get nervous. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a, I'm going to put it to my sandbox subscription so that uh, uh, I can monitor and get rid of it. Yeah, I can, I have to put that information inside of a resource group because everything in Azure belongs in a resource group. So either it can uh, do that or let's go ahead and create a new one. Uh oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I left the space, space in it. Yeah, can't do that. So there you go. It's fine. We'll leave it in East US. Boom. So that is going to take a, a few seconds to do its deployment. I can go to um, essentially going to this uh, Azure AD B2C uh, component that got created. Um, there isn't really much I can do here. It's just basically showing me, hey, that this exists. It's a B2C tenant, okay. but I'm still in the directory Microsoft, right? Because that's the my tenant. That's where I create. Whoa, right. sorry. That's where I created this. Uh, that's where, I'm, where my subscription lives. So let's try this one. If I go to here, it's going to bring me out to another window and in this other window it looks much better right mm -hmm. it, it doesn't give me that error saying hey there's no subscription associated with it uh, you can see this is a uh, um, you know it's actually uh, looking at my domain here that we got created so this is the what we created for a b2c tenant uh, that gets mimicked here as well so this is where I can go into and start um, managing this beta, uh, this B2C environment. And you can see I'm actually signed into that specific directory, right? Mm -hmm. The TDTS live one versus my normal one that I use for, uh, for my other subscription and other work. <clears throat> so we've got that created. All of that lives nice and, and happy. When you went and created that Azure AD instance, uh, and created, uh, when you created, sorry, let me back that up. When you tried to assign Azure AD to your application, what was one of the things you had to do there for that app so that it could understand where uh, Azure AD was? Well, I had to give the tenant ID, if that's what you're wondering, right? I had to give it the tenant ID. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I don't, and then maybe the, I don't remember what else, but the tenant, right? Yeah, and exactly. So ultimately, the tenant is, is where that thing lives. Um, but you had to probably tell Azure AD, hey, this application, I want you to be able to register this application against Azure AD so I can use it for authentication purposes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's same thing happens here. So we've got to go ahead and define an app registration for, uh, for, the for this particular um Interesting. Oh, extensions. Got it. Uh, so we can kind of test this out. So I'm going to do this as TDTS test. So you're uh, registering an application, mm -hmm. and so you do this in the uh, in the B to B to C uh, exactly um, instance. But you'll also, I assume, if it's if you want to do it for your own employees, you would have to do register this application in your AD as well. So that's when we start getting into that thing called um, something called multi-tenancy. Oh. So my application uh, is able to understand 
whether somebody is an employee versus an external person and route that authentication when I say, because the, the code is just going to say slash auth, you know, take me to the auth controller and go ahead and, and um, process this person. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be able to understand, you know, where am I sending them? What's the tenant information I'm sending along with this person? And there's a whole thing that we can get into probably outside the scope of what we're going to try and cover here. But that's essentially called multi-tenancy. And there are projects that we can show and, and uh, uh, an app that we can show at some point in the future about what that looks like. Okay. I'm interested to hear about that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. Now you got to show for it next week. <laughs> uh, so if I do this, um, I'm just going to do something very simple. Uh, you'll see when we go through the, the, the next step, uh, once we register the application and we build something called a, a user flow, and that is how will a user come into my, applica into my application and essentially sign up for an account. What does that look like? Uh, in order to, to run through and test that, we're going to uh, create register an application. That's what we're doing here. We're going to make sure that application goes across uh, um, uh, accounts in an organizational director in any identity provider. So we have that flexibility to go across all of those. And then I also need to have some kind of a redirect URI. So once I authenticate, where do I send the user back to? with the token that says, hey, this person is, here's who this uh, person has authenticated as, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and I talk fast, I go fast. If there are questions, certainly slow me down a little bit here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and register that. So that gives us, you know, that client ID in secret, essentially, uh, mm -hmm. for that app registration. Um, so here we are, we're in the TDT test. This is my, Interesting. Yeah, we do have toggle mask. Yeah, okay. I noticed that on one of your previous screens, I was going to tell you that some of the things just don't seem to be masking, which is unfortunate. Sometimes it might be, you know, I know in others it does. Like if I do the, if I do this, yeah, I all of mean, these. Yeah. yeah. So, um, is what it is. Uh, it's not going to live around long because I'm going to delete it when we're done here. So, right. <laughs> um, so you have your, your client ID, which I don't have to worry about right now because we're just going to do a test harness. But I do need to create a secret. Uh, and I know that the secret will, um, will definitely be visible. So I'm going to bring this down here for a second. Look at my uh, SpaceX rockets there. Sure. That's pretty cool stuff, by the way. I'm a uh, fan of SpaceX. And uh, I drive a little SpaceX mobile, I guess you could say. Oh, that's right. You know, a little Tesla. Minus the star, man. Minus the star, man, <laughs> yeah. Mine hasn't been launched into space. Um, although I've tried. I mean, it, feel like, it feels like it's launching sometimes. <laughs> that thing, uh, it is a little rocket, I'm telling you. Whew. Yeah, I haven't... I. Not in your, was it your car? I remember somebody took me for a ride in one and it was like completely jolted back and oh, yeah. that was pretty cool. Yeah, when you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you definitely feel that like pull back. Um, it's not the only car that does that. I mean, there's plenty of fast cars in the world, but uh, for the price, mm -hmm. it's pretty fast. So pretty happy with that. Yeah. All right. So here we are. So this is my, uh, so here we are we're back at the registration. Um, there is a secret that uh, I pulled the, the appropriate key out of, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, but this is like any app registration. You can define the API permissions. You know, what can I look at? Uh, in this case, uh, you know, by default, we're going to go, ahead, we get things related to Microsoft Graph. So that is the, um, you know, a set of common APIs that gives you access to a lot of the information about um, the, uh, the person who's authenticated or the group that I belong to, uh, as well as it, not only for Azure AD, but uh, potentially for other Microsoft services as well. Things like Office 365 or, or Dynamics uh, are accessible through the Graph uh, APIs. And if I want to, I can add more permissions around that, uh, or I can expose an API through here as well. So there's a lot of flexibility and capabilities just because I've registered my application against uh, this particular tenant. Yeah, and so much of this is is similar to what I did 
for my website, which we talked about earlier, although that echo thing might have screwed up the, that part of the conversation, but I was just doing AD authentication for my app. And mm-hmm. it's really the same thing, but it was in my actual tenant, not my, uh, not a not a B to C tenant. But the the same principles and the same yeah. things you did are are mimicked here. Yeah, it's, which makes like it pretty said, easy to do. Like once you understand the concept, it's it's the same thing. So exactly, that's pretty exactly. Cool, you know. So from here, I'm going to go to. Um, uh, I think you said in one of your studies, just pointed out you had that. Uh, you were playing around with the permissions, the roles inside the manifest. I was, right? yeah. So just like that, we've got a manifest yeah, here where I can define thing, roles. Right. Exactly. Uh, so let's go back to, so this is app registrations. Um, right, so we've got our app registration done. It did blur out the client ID, which is awesome. <laughs> now it does. Uh, so, so we're going to create a policy uh, to be able to use that for someone to authenticate into our application. Now, this is new to uh, me. This is not something I did in mine. No, and it kind of makes sense, right? You wouldn't want people to just randomly come and sign up to your Azure AD uh, company, uh, Azure AD for your company. This is a little different because we're exposing this out to the to the world and saying, hey, I've got a cool website, and but I, you can come in and I bring see. your credentials. This is like, so this up. is not just the login. This is the register. Exactly. Or sign this up, is what's... as you said. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. And that's called a, a user flow. So if I want to, and you can have multiples of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create one called sign up and sign in. And this gives me some of the basic uh, flow, essentially, for me to go ahead and do this. So uh, if I do um, just name it the same way, sign up, sign in, I want to be able to use my email for sign up purposes. Uh, So if I had other identity providers uh, assigned, um, like, uh, like we mentioned, Google, Facebook, what have you, I could select what this particular sign up, sign in process looks like and which one of those providers I can use. So I can potentially create multiples of these. And if I say, hey, I'm coming in with my Microsoft account, I might get one set of, of uh, uh, one sign up, sign in flow. If I'm coming with a Facebook account, I might get a, a different one because of different things I want to collect from each of those uh, different account types. Yes. Yeah, so just to be clear, when you say email sign up here, is mm-hmm. that have anything, is that a relationship to a Microsoft account, which is an email, or I just want to be, right, those are different? Absolutely, it's completely different. Uh, so if I was to set up a Microsoft account as an identity provider, I would I would see that listed in the list here. This is, everybody kind of has an email address, sure. at least one. Um, and they're unique, which is nice. And they're yeah. unique, exactly. So the by default, or I guess the, the minimum stakes is, you're going to bring an email and you're going to be able to sign up with that. Okay, gotcha. Not going to worry about multi-factor authentication, although right. we could turn that on as well. Uh, I'm not going to worry about collecting or returning any of these in a claim, right? So think about oh. the sign-up process. I could ask for these things, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Looks like it would be pretty this. easy to do, by the way, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm instead going to go ahead and do this. I want the country, the region, the display name, um, Let's go ahead and do, uh, I don't know. Um, let's say we want to collect your job title, okay? Sure, why not? Let's mine and, data. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, so that's it. So that's everything I need to create a sign in, sign up flow. I'm going to create that. That's going to take a few seconds to do. Once that's there, it's click, done. Yeah. I can click this. And as I click it and roll into it, I have, you know, essentially the the properties, uh, the type of identity, everything I did when I was creating this up, essentially, uh, as well as what application claims I can include inside of the token when uh, the user presents themselves. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run the user flow. I'm going to test it out. Wow. Really? So here, yep, okay. I've got right inside of the window here. Um, trying to remember if I clicked the user token or whether we need to. So that, if I'm thinking where I am, oh, in here? Yeah, hang on. Um, 
No, that wasn't in here. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Because I know there's a user token thing on the, like, a, well, it's a different part of this that I remember, but okay. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to run the flow. Okay. And you can see, because we've uh, put this information in, it knows, hey, these here's an application that got registered to the particular B2C tenant that we created. Okay. Uh, I can use this as a dropdown, select the one I want to use. Since I only have one, I can just basically take yeah. that, and then there's my reply URL that goes with it. Uh, we're not going to worry about those. Um, I think if I do this, we'll do this as a little... Uh, a little test while we're working through this. Hang on one sec. Um, so what I did was I pasted to you uh, the endpoint oh, to run my cool. user flow. So I'm going to click run. Okay, wait, hang on. Let That's me... going to take. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Cool. That's going to take me to the sign-in page. Sign in, sign up. Right. Uh, what it wants is uh, if I am already authenticated. I can just sign right in, but I don't have a username and password here yet. What I want to do is I want to be able to, let's say, go ahead and sign up for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use, right? I can use the dev talk show at outlock.com. I can say, sorry, send uh, me. Um, give me a sec. I'm just a little distracted because I want to follow this, but uh, okay. I'm worried about my browsers. Doing Take stuff. Time. So I want to. I think I'm going to just close some browser windows so I don't get into trouble with them. Okay. Yeah, because as soon as I open it, if I. if Okay. Um, this browser doesn't seem to be causing trouble. <laughs> so, yeah, it's only the ones that have a lot of stuff going on, I think. Okay, sorry. It's okay. So all I did was. Say I want to sign up, I put my username in, in this case my email, because that's what it wants me to use as my uh, I identity. Mm -hmm. And I said, send me a code. And what I'm going to do is, let me find our dev talk show window. Let's bring this over here. Hey, who's that guy? Ah. And then there is my code that got sent to me in my email address. So this is kind of how it does that handshake of, you say you're this person. If you're this right. person, you'll have the email address. And Verifying that's what we have. email, yeah, sure. So I'm going to copy it. <clears throat> I'm going to go back into this. I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to say verify. Okay. So now that oh, I'm wait, verified. Wait, wait, hang on, we're not on your screen. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't go back to your screen because you told me to go away from your screen and I was confused with oh, okay. a couple other things. But the point is, you showed so you this verify. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is, people people know this kind of stuff, I think, right? This should be yep. somewhat familiar to people. You got an email. You, first, you put in your email address in that top screen and you verified it. It sent you that code. You entered mm -hmm. it and then it gave you this screen right here. Exactly. And I assume, so by the I'm, way, that that box at the top is like a logo. I can put my, I can brand this thing. Absolutely. And there's a, that's a whole nother show because that's something else that, uh, another path that we can walk down about how you would brand this and, and what you might want this to look like. So you would have control over what you want this page to be for your company or your, or your uh, property. Cool. Why don't you minimize that little Skype window that's over the top? Is oh, that's here. still. It just keeps getting in the way. Every time we flip between yeah, sharing, it yeah. pops. Okay, so great. So you're going to create a password here, you know. Yep, and they look like they're the same. I'm going to put a country or region in. Uh, in this case, we'll go ahead and say United States. These are, and these name. are the values that you asked to collect. Yes, exactly right, because that's the... Yep. the yeah, the region, region there's job title. Name. Right, exactly. Let's just do rich, <laughs> job title. Um, uh, host. <laughs> You're the host with the most. Internet, Internet host. hack. Internet hack. Oh, come on. I was going to be nice to you than that. <laughs> there we go. So let's go ahead and create this. Now, what happened was, as part of that process, it's taking me out to that page 
where I went and signed up and then signed, uh, essentially signed in as part of the return, instead of sending me back to the application, if you wired this up in an application, like you did with the Azure AD one, it should send you back to the application as the redirect mm -hmm. URL. Right. We told it just send us to this and let us use this as the, uh, as the redirect. Yeah. I wasn't um, sure. Is this something that you have? just for these purposes, it's like a Microsoft JWT.m. What is this? Yeah, so this is a way of, um, there's a couple of them out there. Uh, this one doesn't, um, the token never goes, there's something with the token where it never comes back to us. It basically remains in the browser to some extent um, so that we never, if I understand right, there's a, it's a more secure way of, of accessing the contents of the token. Cool. Because it lives in your world versus ours. Right. But this is obviously, this is for testing purposes or, or, you know, whatever, demo purposes. Exactly. And that test didn't return what I thought it was because when I did this earlier, there's a token that should be in here and it's not. No, it says so, enter token below. Like it wants you to enter one. Right? Well, it should have given me one. Okay when it created the account. So let's try this. Let's see if it, let's see if it went through. So if I am part of the domain now, I should be able to do this. I'm oh, sorry. Everything wants to know your password. That's fine, right? But yeah, yeah, but it didn't pop. That's interesting. So, are we? Are you? Does this mean you're you're authenticated though? Yeah, absolutely. So, if I go to so this is just this is that sign up flow that we have, right? Right. If I go to here, and, I can look at yeah, users. Yeah. And no, it never got created. Well, it's created right there, Rich. No, that was a previous. Uh... Rich is the name you just used. That was the display name. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yes, because we're in a separate, uh, separate tenant. So you know what I, I was thinking that when if you go back to that the the A to B to C page, that thing, right? So I know that when I do this under applications. This is what you were talking about before under app registrations. Yeah, I think it might even be under app registrations. Then That's why you have to go down there and select ID token, right? Yes. Under I authentication, do that. I believe it's on the authentication tab. That checkbox down there. Yep, there it is. Yep. Uh, I missed the implicit grant. Yeah. So now um, you were mentioned before something about ID tokens, and I was going to ask about this, but I was like, oh, I I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, like. <laughs> Let's see if it, yeah. it didn't come so back let's, though, or did it? That's okay. Yeah. We'll do this. Let's go here. Let's go to our user flow. Let's go to our sign up, sign in. Let's run it. And let's hit the endpoint. Oh, yeah, Ooh, there you go. There That's what you're waiting for. That's what you're waiting so, for. Yep. So what this does is this, once you go through that handshaking and, and mechanism, this is the token that gets sent back to the application that sent the user away to go authenticate. Right. So let's just say this. it's my, uh, my .NET Core, ASP.NET Core web app, mm -hmm. right? This thing is going to get, this is what's coming back to it, right? Exactly. Including... The uh, the claim oh there's a claims tab there so this is the kind of stuff that would get loaded into the principal the identity and stuff like that right exactly right so this so this is your uh, decoded access token if I yep. look at the claims it'll actually break it down and show you what each of those individual components oh, are great. so when does it expire um, claim is the time the token became valid you know all of the mm -hmm. little including this here this here, which comes off of the properties that we define. So, that, so it creates claims for all those. At least, 
for the purposes of what it returns back to the user. It returns them as claims, which is kind of the typical way things are these days. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I could now, if let's say that, let's say we had a custom claim in there that was related to a role, right? So, you know, maybe I'm in there, I have a, uh, a checkbox or a set of, uh, properties in there that I'm an admin. So that gives me, I can look at it, say, does that property say that I'm an admin and we can, you know, use that as part of, um, as I continue to, to navigate through your application, uh, be able to, uh, um, use that to expose or, or uh, share out additional features, if you will. This is pretty easy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I say easy, right? And for anyone watching and listening, I mean, I get that the first time you do things, they don't always work and, and it'll take a little research, which you've done this before. So when we say easy, someone's going to be like, yeah, well, when I did it, it didn't work. And, and, I get that, right? I'm not well, trying to oversimplify it, but this is doable. Yeah, right. but even even if it doesn't work, right? Because mine didn't work yeah. in this trial here, even though I'd done it previously, because I knew that something in the back of my mind said so we had to check those other boxes. But it was an easy fix and save those settings and boom, you're back up to running to where you should be. Right. Same thing if we wanted to do something like this. Let's say, uh, sorry, if I do this. Can I, here's the user attributes. Let's say I want to include, um, uh, hmm. Is that, yeah, country region, they're all there. Like that? Yeah, whatever. yeah whatever. sure, yeah. why not? We can do that. Well, that may get a little personal because of the, the save properties inside of here. So yeah, but I could change what I want to bring back and be able to have those be displayed inside of that same token when it gets sent back. Mm -hmm. Now, what if you all of a sudden want to add, this is what I thought you were doing, but you were able to, in the beginning, say these are the pieces of data I want to collect, mm -hmm. and these, it's two different lists, these are the pieces of data I want to return in the claim. What happens if I all of a sudden say, you know what, oh man, I got like 100 users, but I think I want to collect another piece of data. Do you, that's a good question. Um, I would, you can certainly do that. Let me say, so if I... I was wondering if it was going to prompt the user and say, hey, by the way, we need a piece of data that you don't have or something like that. That'd be really cool. Um, yeah, that might be something to take a look at. I would I would think you can change it, right? Because I can come in here and, and say email address. And yeah, but you don't have that full them. long list of a million other things that were, it looked like... In the original setup, there was a long list on the right panel, right? That that's what that's what this part is. Okay. Those are the, there's, uh, so there's not even, that many choices. Okay, it looked like a lot. No. Yeah, I think these down here were part of what we saw in that second panel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I could I could add those. Now I have to have some way to collect them from the user if they're blank. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's on next, you know, if all of a sudden I put this in, well, let's try it. If all of a sudden they put this in and say, I want well, the, yeah, I mean, they're not going to have their object ID, right? Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Surname. Yeah. You didn't ask for that before. Oh, so if I do save. It would be really cool if it says, oh, Hey, we don't have some data that you want, you know? password mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't ask for that you know it does not which i mean that that would be you know somewhat complicated too so I, who knows you know yeah it's, and it actually because it's they don't have it doesn't return it yeah 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 i'm eh, just curious to know what would happen if you did that i like yeah, to try but there to break be some way to force it yeah no there's nothing wrong with trying to break stuff yeah well <laughs> What? Oh, no, that's true. Yeah. So this is pretty easy to do, though. I like this. So um, and it, it, think about what we're, what we're looking at here. It's if you were to, hey, I've got this application, I, but I need to have some way of 
you know, maintaining a username password. I'll just put it in a table in a database, right. unencrypted, of course. Now, all of a sudden, I'm responsible for all of that uh, complexity and making sure that it's something more than just a straight old username password type text box um, and handling all of that, that communication. This takes it off your plate and puts it where it should be in a secure, standard way of allowing people to sign up and authenticate to your services. Yeah. So um, what's in page layouts? Can we peek in there? Is that where you would like design how you want the page to? Um, ba, ba, ba. Page layout version. Oh. oh, look, there's a version down there, a drop down. Uh, that's not like, doesn't give you a whole lot of information, quite frankly. Uh -uh. You'd have to know what you're looking for there. Use custom page content so you can decide you want to do a whole page of your own. It yes. looks like. Oh, well, there's some different the things. There's some templates right there, yeah. So there's that on the user flow. There you go. Slate gray. Yeah, change it a little bit. Yep. Mm hmm And uh, so another question I have is if right now we said, you know what would be cool is what if we also want to allow these users to use their Microsoft account? Exactly. Would that be like you said you'd have to add the provider wasn't in that drop down list that, or there wasn't a there was only email address in there, right? So mm -hmm. somewhere along the line you said to say, Oh, there it is. Manage identity providers, right? I want you know, you have to be affiliated with that provider somehow, right? Like usually it's by means of like a client ID and a secret that you're gonna that they've given yep. you to allow you to authenticate your yeah. users and stuff like that. Which is, you know, so so I I mean you're you're essentially doing an app registration against those identity providers, right? Yeah, I guess that's what it is. You're right. It's the same thing. But it makes it look like, so we haven't gone down this path, but my guess is that it gets, it's pretty easy at this point. Like it's built in for all these things. Yeah. So, so that second step we did where we did the app registration, right. got us the client ID, we created a secret, hold those information, bring them back to here. Now I can copy and paste those in and now I have a choice when I sign up um, and I would have a different sign up sign in process now that included that as an identity provider where I could send people down that path if that's what they wanted to use. Right. Um, it's cool. It is pretty neat. And you know, what, 30 minutes we had this thing configured. Yeah. You can't argue with that. So just trying to think a little bit about, scenarios so i mean i yeah yeah it's just kind of cool because i think it's like the best of both worlds if i'm if i'm getting this right everybody's always said in the past well you want to use a third party provider you want to use a microsoft account or a google account facebook account one of those things because mm -hmm. you don't want to be in the business of managing passwords Right. But here I'm basically saying, well, I'll allow you to create a local account, but I'm still not in the business of managing the password because Azure is doing it for me. Right. Yeah, that's the I mean, the that's a good question. If I do, let's say if we look at the users, like it's not my database or is it or is it really my database? And I guess it is to some degree. This is right. I mean, well, it it's is, not... but I don't have like, I can't see the password they created, I bet there's, there's no way for me to see it. No, there isn't. And it's not, it's very much, it's unlike, you know, the, the old SQL membership databases that we used to create, right. right? But it has similar kind of functionality. And if you have one of those, you can actually bulk import and bring those into here and get those out of the database where they don't belong and let, and you know, take advantage of the cloud for doing this. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking about is that sometimes you do those membership databases and things like that. And this just takes that out and then it, it level sets everything because you're back at like groups, mm -hmm. you know, like you don't have to think about like, well, some users are in groups and others have roles. No, every, it's all the same, the same model for all of your users, you know, AD yep. or, or, um, B to C. You can see here's all the, the three sign-ins that I did. Um, I can assign licenses if we do this. Um, 
devices, but I'm not tracking any of those Azure role assignments. Interesting. Okay. Um, application mechanism. Cool. So this can be. Um, let me see real quick. Did we do? What was that property we put in? Um, surname. Yeah. That's the one we added at the end. Uh, did it get saved? I don't see it. Maybe I didn't save it. Let me go back to the other screen and see if it's still checked. Uh, user flow. That's what I want. It's not checked. No, no, no. Oh, it's all, oh, I see. This is on the claims, but it wasn't ever set as a user attribute. Oh. So that all might right. be. So maybe it will collect it. Maybe it won't. We don't know. Let's try that again. No, still didn't ask, but that's okay. Interesting. Now it should show up on that other screen at least. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Uh, here. Um, Users. Yeah. Me. Uh, gosh, it's hard to see on this thing. Contact info. It should be under identity. Yeah, I don't see it. That's interesting. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I wonder if it. Maybe you can't change these things. Although I would think you'd have to be able to change these things. Mm hmm. I agree. Um, are we missing it? You want to do like a find on page in case it's just somewhere? I don't know. No, I'm pretty I sure. I don't see it. it. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, I have to look into why that's, that's the case. interesting. Yeah. So, um,. What was I going to say? I was thinking um, when we started looking at that. Um, so you still have like password reset there, by the way. So you can force yep. a reset. I see it on the left. Is that password reset? Uh, oh, yeah, there's that one there, too. So um, and you can turn on multi-factor authentication if you want to do that. Yep. Um, now, I assume if you put on multi-factor authentication, it has to ask the person how would they like to be contacted, right? Exactly. So that would have to trigger a flow change, right? Because you didn't have it on before. That's true. I did not. I wonder what that would do. <laughs> I'm determined to break this thing, you know. Can't, uh, let's see. I don't, there must be, there's a, there's got to be an additional upstream configuration that we don't have in place yet for this. Under flows? Would that be considered a flow? Yeah, so you got, oh, profile editing, which is kind of cool, by the way. So if I want to change my information, we can provide a profile flow for them. And it says, at the top, though, it says name. Unique string to use this identity, this user flow. So you have to name the flow. Okay. Yeah. So this means that they'll only be able to allow to collect these. So you collected more stuff in the beginning. I'm curious. Right. Now. Surname I did not collect. Right. So. Uh... Seems like a good name. Now I've got two. And it does say this profile one. editing. Now, how does the user get to that? <laughs> We're going to find out. Yeah, we it? are. Huh? Well, that changed. Right? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. I was I should have had your back on that.
Never Look at this. A. So now I can throw a surname in there. Oh, I wonder if I just I just thought of something. Hello. I'm just, yeah, we're still on. This is a lot of information. So there you go. There's the user surname. Now it's included as part of my claims. That's okay. Thanks. Um, so can you do it? Yeah, so now it's doing that. So Rich, I'm sorry. I had a thought. If yeah. you go to this tester here. So I was wondering sure if when you said run the flow, if it gave you a choice between which flow you want. Like maybe you were in the, the you know, we created two flows now. Yeah. So I thought so, maybe when you clicked it the second time, it took, because you had a different login and it automatically took you to that, you know. Now you sent me the thing. I'm going to hit a refresh on this. I wonder if this will change anything. See, I still get the old flow. Hang on. Um, page layouts. We're just winging it here. Oh, yeah. But that's fine, right? Yeah, see that says update profile, right? So Well, that's interesting. It only says like you only get a choice to run the one flow. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Because you're, it, it's just for testing. Yeah. So are you in that flow? I was. That flow sends me to that. Page. Yeah. So how do you get back to the other flow? Oh, because you're under user flows, right? So if you go back to the other flow, that's what I was saying. That that's okay. I knew you were going to get a choice somewhere. And now here, if you say run the user flow, you'll mm -hmm. go back to the other one. Yeah. So so we would have to provide a link on our website that says, hey, if you want to change your profile, here's how you do it. I guess. Yes. Which would point them at the other flow. Yep, absolutely. And that's easy too. Like, well, okay, that's not a big deal. Interesting. So, and the, yeah. and the difference is that if I wanted to, so in my little Schwami Streams website, I have yep. the Azure AD authentication going, right? Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to say, hey, Rich, sign up for Schwami Streams, I don't want to add you to my, it, like, there's no way to have you register for my AD. Like, that's not what we want. So this is like a totally separate thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, this makes sense to me a lot. This makes a lot of sense to me. Um, now, I would also guess that the stuff I did in Schwami Streams, like the configuration on that side of it, is exactly the same. I'm just changing the tenant ID and giving it a new secret and stuff like that. And it's going to just work the same way. Right? It should. Because it's AD authentication and I'm just changing yes. the AD it authenticates against. Right. The token you get back will be a little different because you can craft certain things in it. Well, but I um, could do that with, with, the other stuff as well. I mean, I, I don't think that it cares about that. It's going to get a token, you're, you know? Yeah. You're probably not doing anything at this point that looks at the token and says, you know, who are you? What, what permissions do you have or anything? Well, I'm, I am reading the claims and stuff like that, but claims are claims, right? Yeah. So that's easy. You can right? inject whatever yeah. you want into them. So it seems like it would be pretty easy to do the other end of as well, but um, I don't know if we're going to get to that today. Probably not tonight. <laughs> I'm feeling like we could wrap this show up. I, as I said earlier, it's time to claim victory. <laughs> yeah, you did say that. Um, so we're going to be doing this again next week. Different topic, yeah. but we'll be here. Hopefully Chris will be with us. Yeah, I mean, we can continue down this path if it makes sense. Um, get the other identity provider in there. Get the um, look at the identity experience framework where we can start to uh, 
pull different sources of information and um, use that to modify the claim that we send back. Mm, I'd like to see that. So how about uh, we could also build the front end and show how easy it is to connect the front end. Yeah. You know, the authentication absolutely. piece. And then, yeah. And then I guess if we had time, I would be interested to see how hard it is to combine like my, um, my internal users and my external users and let them both authenticate. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know how that would, you know, so that's, that would be a, that would be a good show. Yeah, that'd be fun. Because it's yeah, that's that's something is a common thing that comes up with customers. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, we we would have a need for it, my, you know, my organization, and we do stuff like that with other other types of providers and stuff like that. But I'd like to see the Microsoft path to getting there. Definitely. Um, cool. I'm going to go back to the old two shot here. Again, I don't yep. understand why the chat is empty on this screen. I wonder if it's a chat setting that we are not showing. I think I remember correctly that in the chat, there's a checkbox that says, I want new users to see the old chat. And I think each time I refresh this page, it's treating it as a new user. Like It's like I refreshed my browser or something like that. I, that I don't know. Something to take a look at. But not tonight. Um <laughs> I think uh, I think this was good. We had some glitches here, but I think you know, for people that are watching, this is part of our process. We're trying to figure out how to do this, how to keep remotely. This, yeah, remotely. We're trying to figure out how to keep this show going mm -hmm. um, in this interesting time. And quite frankly, even in this not interesting time, it's nice for us to sometimes be able to do the show remotely and do it from home and things like that. Yeah. Um, so maintain. Maintain a little bit of normalcy. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my, my wife had popped in here earlier. My son needs some help with some homework and stuff like that. If we were in the studio, I would have to now drive home. You know, it would be later, right? So now I can I can walk out the door and help him. And uh, that makes it easier for me personally. So I like Absolutely. It. Yeah. It's this is the better way to, certainly a better way to do it if we can work out all the kinks. Right. So what does Chris always say? He goes, so for Rich Ross behind the console, but you're not, I am, right? I'm not. To you. But yeah. he usually says it, for Rich Ross and Andy Schwam, he'll, he'll say my name Schwam, and then he'll go, I mean Schwam, and because uh, <laughs> you know he you know he's got to at least flub it once. He's got to flub it. He's been pretty good. He's been pretty. No, good. I know. We'll have him back with us here next week, and we'll be able to make fun of him in person. But um, why don't we wrap it up, right? Um, I think so. So come back again if you're watching us now. Uh, do us a favor. Follow us on Mixer or Twitch. And if you're on YouTube, subscribe. Give us the like if you can. We appreciate all those kind of all those kind of little things. Mark your calendars to come back next week at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time for the Dev Talk Show. And I'll throw a little plug in there. At noon Eastern Wednesdays as well, Schwami Streams is on. And uh, that's just me babbling the whole time and talking about code and stuff like that. So... We're there too. We're in the chat. Yeah, you guys are usually hanging around too. I appreciate that. You got anything else for people? Something, something uh, to plug? So just it happened on Monday. If you're interested in doing uh, in using Xamarin, uh, so being able to build mobile applications for Android, iOS, but using uh, the the tools that certainly I know and love around .NET and C Sharp, uh, there was a great uh, session on Monday. Uh, the .NET Comp did a focus on Xamarin tooling. Uh, so a lot of interesting tips and, and some of the latest releases information out there and the things that we're doing uh, as, as mobile platforms uh, start to change. Um, and there are different form factors and things that come out. So I would definitely check that out. Uh, give that a little uh, give that a little look see and see if the, uh, maybe that spurs an interest in some kind of a cool mobile app that you can bring into Azure AD B2C to do your authentication with. So something to check out. That sounds cool. Those .NET comps that they're doing, this is the second one that is like a, there's the big .NET conf. Yep. But then they've now done two. They did a .NET conf on Blazor. Back in January. In yep. January. And now they did this one on Xamarin. And it's kind of cool that they're using that format and that brand name, .NET yeah. conf. But that they're, they're being smart. They're reusing like, okay, well, we know how to do this. Why don't we deliver content more often uh, yeah. on a virtual 
you know, platform like that. It, it works pretty good. I, I went to some of the Blazer stuff. I didn't attend any of Xamarin, but I, the, the Blazer stuff is great, you know. And yeah, it's usually and it, up there online. Like, I'm sure you can still watch the stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's still up there. Probably go to .NET I, Conf, I think, as the web address, if I remember correctly. I believe you're right. Yeah. Um, .dotnet, right? I think so, yeah. I'm tired. Yeah, dot .net, conf, dot .net. Conf, dot .net. And does it have the content on there from the, both of the shows? Uh... Yep, it says it's a wrap, but here's where you can learn more. And it's got a couple of pictures and, um, uh, you know, just some some uh, Instagram stuff. Cool. So. All right. Anyway, so dot net conf dot com. Dot net. net. That would make sense. Dot net conf dot net. All right. So let's wrap it up. I'm going to hit the stop button. And uh, it was okay. great seeing you tonight, Rich. Great seeing you too, Andy. Thanks for putting this together and all the hard work to make it happen. My pleasure.